All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a selfie, because that's how this, this, this conference because rolls. Are you ready? Because, because being an Aspen is yes. so Instagrammable. It's, it's so, so visual. It's so grammable. And you see the these photos set. up here, so Instagrammable. That's right. So are, are you ready? I'm ready. We're doing it. Here we go. All right. There we go. Beautiful. OK. So you can check his skills afterwards. Yeah, seriously. I'll put it up after we get finished. So what, what I want to know is, um, first off, everybody here, who uses Facebook? Raise your hand. Damn near everybody. OK. Who uses Instagram? Raise your hand. Can we do the other way where we say, who doesn't use Instagram so I can come okay, find you OK, let's do that. Who, who doesn't use Facebook? Who doesn't use Facebook? No, Instagram. I'll get there. Who doesn't use Instagram? Raise your hand. OK, a few more. Keep up. But a, a minority. Right. Who doesn't use Snapchat? Oh, man, come on. You got to do what the millennials do. We're going to talk about that. OK. Marnie, you joined Instagram in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, you were at Facebook before. Mm -hmm. Tell me what Instagram was like then and contrast it with now, because the company has grown you know, unbelievably since then. I think it's a really exciting time at Instagram, and you're right. We have probably changed more in the last year than we changed in our entire six years of existence. If you looked at our platform a year ago even, it looked like a totally different platform than it does um, today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have introduced all kinds of new things on the platform. We have changed our feed. We've introduced Instagram stories, which lets you share highlights and all moments um, and really tell your full, authentic, whole story. Um, video. I sure. Mean, most people probably think of Instagram as being photos, and yet video has been exploding. People are watching 80% more video than they were this time last year, and they're producing four times more video than, per day than they were last year. So it's exploding. There are, things like, um, there are things like live, which allow people to hang out together. So we have changed a lot over the last year. And I have to say, sure. that change has not been totally comfortable for us. Yeah. If you think back to what Instagram was maybe when you first started using it, and you think of the square, right? That iconic square. The first time that somebody suggested that maybe we support landscape or portrait, you would have thought that that person committed heresy. <laughs> but Kevin Systrom, our CEO, um, really pushed us to think differently, and we moved beyond the square, so to speak, and started supporting all different kinds of formats. And that really sort of freed us to think about the ways that we could support our community in telling their stories in a visual way. And I think the really good companies, Kevin talks about this a lot, if you look back at companies that have been successful, it is those companies that about every two years change and to morph into something else. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the company itself, right? Everything you just outlined was product oriented. Tell me about the people, right? You had a I want to say something like 150 employees back then, and now you've got 750, sort of something like that. Something, I mean, north of, something north of 500 or so. Right. Well, you're a leader at the company. How have you rebuilt this to function accordingly? I mean, yeah. you know. Well, our, um, our community, the Instagram community, um, we now have more than 700 million globally. 80% are outside of the United States. Um, people come and use the service. 400 million people use the service every day. Mm -hmm. We introdu introduced Instagram Stories. It didn't exist last year at this time, and 250 million people are using it on a daily basis. It is a truly global platform where people are coming to tell their stories in a vi very visual way. People are coming to connect around shared interests and passions and experience the world through imagery. Sure. A lot of that also, a lot of that inspiration comes from businesses too. So um, about a half a billion people, so 80% of our community connects to a business voluntarily. And so businesses are really finding um, success on the platform too. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So um, what I want to understand is how is, you know, kind of what position does Instagram occupy in the greater Facebook Borg? There's a reason I asked about Facebook earlier, of course, own. Mm -hmm. uh, you aren't broken out in the earnings reports, but what can you tell us about uh, how business is? What can you tell us about 
Instagram's position in the greater strategy of the company? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of how linked or not are these things? Yeah. So first of all, I'll just say being at face, being a part of Facebook is a really amazing thing. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's like having Mark and Cheryl, Mark Zuckerberg and Cheryl Sandberg on your board of advisors. You get access to like these really brilliant minds. You get, um, you get um, access to all kinds of different resources. We're able to leverage a lot of the things that Facebook has developed uh, for Instagram. And that is what has allowed us to grow as quickly as, as we have. At the same time, Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, who are two co-founders, are still there and they are running Instagram and they are really carrying out their vision for Instagram that they had back in 2010. For businesses, which you were talking about, sure. um, about two years ago, we um, opened up for to businesses big and small to advertise on the platform. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. And I think that we are, um, we now have a million uh, active advertisers who are finding great success with their advertisements in feed, but also in Instagram stories, which is something that we just did recent, which is something that we just did recently. Sure. And we're really, in, we're really focused on investing there. And the businesses that are advertising there are using the full screen. There's more video. It's very immersive and engaging, and they're seeing good results. And in fact, of the um, most viewed stories on Instagram stories, a third come from businesses. So what that says is that people do want to hear from businesses. So it's a great opportunity, not only for businesses, but for people in our community who have passions and interests sure. to get connected to the things that businesses are providing. So how's business? It's great, as I said. What well, can I you mean, tell me about it? It's going really well. I mean, we've been, we've been focused on um, making sure that we uh, we continue to help businesses use our ad products. Um, again, help them use uh, Instagram stories and advertising, but also really just engage in the community and develop their presence um, on the platform. I think one of the special things that we have about uh, Instagram is that not only do we have 700 million people sure. on the platform, and not only is it a global community so businesses are able to deepen the relationship with their existing customers, but also connect to new customers in markets where they never would have. This is true for big, custom, for big, for big brands, for big businesses, but al also for small businesses too. Just a couple weeks ago, I was in LA. I met a, um, a woman who just left her job. She started a letter press you know, kind of a business. She's now hired two more people, and she's doing this full time. And I hear these stories all around the United States, but also all around the world. I was sure. in Australia, I heard it there, and I hear of these stories, and this is kind of amazing, which I would love to share, of how in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Riyadh, there are supposedly 4,000 Instagram-powered businesses on the platform. And the vast majority of those businesses are run by, are run by women. So in a country where mm -hmm. women can't drive, and often need the assistance of a man to do certain things in the country, they are creating and running and fueling their businesses on Instagram. So I think it's exciting, lots of exciting things ahead for businesses, and yeah. we're really focused on making it a great place for them. You mentioned uh, Instagram using some Facebook technologies to kind of accelerate its growth. Can you, you know, give me a list of a few things maybe? Well, so one, of the, so one of the ways, since we're talking about advertising, which is sure. one of my most favorite subjects, <laughs> is, um, and I'm sure for all of you too, um, one of the ways is that when we did decide to um, offer advertising to, biz to all kinds of businesses and to drive a range of business objectives, we were able to build on what Facebook had already developed. So now today, so one in five mobile minutes is spent on Instagram and Facebook combined. There are two billion people on Facebook and 700 million on Instagram. So businesses need to be on both platforms. What we were able to do when we offered advertising and what we've been focused on over the past couple of years is helping businesses run their campaigns across both platforms, figure out how to retarget re or remarket to people on the different platforms, sure. use Instagram stories, repurpose assets, and just make it a, a much easier experience for them. And I think that they are finding great success. What we didn't have to do is start from the very beginning of 
you know, creating the ad technology. Um, we were also able to leverage Facebook's targeting. And the targeting is so, so very important for an ad because really what you want to do, and especially on Instagram, is you're coming there to see stuff that you're going to be interested in that connects sure. with, your, with your interests. And so if you're able to get that, the right story in front of the right person at the right time, that's great for the business and it's great for the person who's receiving. And yeah. this is very challenging. I mean, you know, we've all, I think, experienced Facebook uh, uh, where, where, you know, the, the wrong stuff or old stuff shows up. We've done that with Instagram just the other day, uh, the 4th of July, uh, days after the actual holiday, I was still getting fireworks in my feed. Hmm. And I was thinking, well, I guess they're still working on the algorithm because, you know, I'm over it. You know, it's like did you, Tuesday. Did you provide feedback? I don't know if I did. Well, one of the things about so, shame Instagram, on me. Well, <laughs> not to not to blame you, sure. but I'm saying that um, one of the great things about our community on Instagram is that they are, in fact, um, very active. It's a very active and engaged community. I mean, people are coming to um, Instagram to connect with the people who they care most about. They're coming to connect with the things that are most of most interest to them. You mean they're not just doing it for their ego? They are no? most definitely not. It's a, it is a community, sure. and that community is, uh, is important. Our mission, and maybe, this, maybe it's helpful to help explain this, which is that our mission is to strengthen relationships. Mm -hmm. That is, in fact, what we want to do. So everything that we do is in service of that mission. Every new tool is intended to bring you closer together with other people. Everything that is suggested for you potentially to follow is supposed to map to your interests. Sure. The ads that you see are to connect with your interests so that we hope that we get feedback in the way, you know, from somebody like you so that you're not getting the kinds of ads that you don't want to see, sure. so that you are seeing the content that will be most meaningful and most important to you. I just want to say one other thing. Go ahead. A moment to say this is that since we are in this business of strengthening relationships, um, one of the things that we know that we absolutely have to get right for business purposes, but also something where we feel an immense, immense sense of responsibility around is creating a really kind, supportive, inclusive community. When Kevin and Mike started Instagram, what they wanted, they wanted it to be a place where people shared all their moments. And as that community grew, it became harder for people to share those moments and feel comfortable sharing those moments. So it is so important for us um, to make sure that we, we get this right. Because when people tell that story, that is when the magic happens. That is when people are um, able to inspire somebody else. If you're a teen, and you would prefer to read Jane Austen on a Saturday night rather than go to the football game. Sure. If you go to hashtag Bookstagram, you may find a community and you feel like you suddenly belong part of a community of people who also want to read on a Saturday night. If you are LGBTQ and you tell your story on the platform, then somebody who lives somewhere else who might not see anybody who looks like them suddenly feels that they are okay, that they can connect to somebody who um, is more like them and they don't feel so alone. So giving people that opportunity to tell the story um, is, is a privilege, I think, that we have. But what we know that we need to do is really focus on creating um, a kind and supportive community. So what we've done is we've invested in technology for kindness. We've given people a way to filter out the words, the harm words that you don't want to see in your comments. Right. We've given, um, and now what we're doing is we're applying machine learning to try to train the machines to be able to filter out the most abusive or harmful comment, harmful words from comments. And this is something that you've taken from Facebook, right? This is kind of core technology. I think they are doing, I think we've learned some things from them and then we are doing some things our own way uh -huh. as well. Okay. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. So, so you know, you, you obviously have your own development, right? You are borrowing certain things off the Facebook shelf, and that makes total sense, right? You're also borrowing things from the competitive set, Snapchat and so forth, right? So, you know, we've got stories, we've got filters, we've got ephemeral messages. You knew he was going to go I there, knew, right? You knew I was going to go there, right? I mean, come on. Um, and, and what I want to understand is, you know, when, when Kevin was asked about this, he kind of gave kind of a circumspect answer. And, well, you know, it's the community. We all build technology. To, 
Totally get it. I mean, we're going to see that we're, you know, we're going to talk about this later with Qualcomm and the mobile space and how companies are interdependent. But what are you building that's distinct? You know, because Snapchat is building a lot of this stuff first, and then Facebook is building a lot of these core technologies. So, what is Instagram building on its own? Yeah. So I'd love to address this. Please do. I'm glad you asked. Um, we've acknowledged over and over again that we did not invent the stories format. It's a great format, and it's one that works really well in our particular community. And the reason is, goes back to something I said a few minutes ago, which is that um, people, as the community grew, started sharing only their highlights. And yet, in 2015, people um, collected or took more photos on their mobile phone than were taken during the entire era of the analog camera. So there was all this content, but but people ne didn't necessarily feel comfortable sharing it, either because of pressures around likes and comments, or because they had a very curated um, uh, profile. It was part of their identity, or um, you know, they just didn't want to share it there. Sure. And so what the stories format allowed people in the community to do is, um, is be able to share their full, whole story, and that, was, and that is really important. So what is it that we are building? Well, that's what I'm asking because yes, so you, you, you keep taking the community point of view, which I totally get, right? It's all about the customer. But what I'm asking you is really, as a business, what makes Instagram unique? Yes. So what, but what it is is it comes back to the community because stories, you see, is only one particular feature, one particular format. But, what, but what's great about it is the way that it works in concert with feed. The way that um, the way these things all work together within the community. So somebody tells a story. They may show that you know my my friends in Washington D.C. I may see them baking a cake with their sure. kids, and I don't just see the final one, the final finished product. I now see the one that they burned, the one that they dropped on the floor, the one that the dog ate, and that actually is what strengthens the relationship. That brings us closer together because I feel like I am there. And so it's how these things work together. For a business, if there is an ad or there is some story that the business is telling, maybe I see something that I'm really interested in and I want to have a conversation with a couple of my friends about whether the shoes are going to go with my dress. I may then um, message that to a group of people and we go off and we have a private conversation about sure. that. So it's how these things Which you all can do work in together. Snapchat. But in the case of, of Instagram, what's happening is that this has been since 2010, and we have been building this up. And the, and the issue is about how all of these things work together. And when you're on Instagram, it's all your favorite people. Yeah. It's all your favorite things. It's all your favorite businesses. And then there is the potential of all the new people who you may discover and all the new uh, things or communities or businesses that you may discover too. So it all kind of works together. Yeah. And so our main focus really is maintaining that sharp focus on our core value, which is community first, and giving people the way to tell their story in the way that they want to do it and make sure that they are connected in the best way possible to the things they want to be connected to. Got it. To. All about the community. Okay, let's go to questions, shall we? Right up here in the front, if we could. Just hang on, hang on one sec. They're going to bring you the mic. Please, your name and, and who you're with, please. Ashu Garg with Foundation Capital. Thank you. Uh, just building on the Snapchat sort of uh, story. Uh, all the data I see seems to suggest that most Snapchat users, you know, use Snapchat for twice as long on a day. They spend, you know, they, they log in many more times a day. So, best I can tell, you're losing the battle to Snapchat. What am I missing? What's he missing? Ah, uh, well, I, um, <laughs> so as, as we talked about before, I, we're part of Facebook. And so from a time spent perspective, we don't actually break it. We don't break it out as a separate thing. We're just sort of part of the family of apps and services in Facebook. Our earnings call is coming up very soon. You can hear more about that there. However, um, as I said before, just to give you some sort of sense of it, one in five mobile minutes is spent on Facebook and Instagram uh, combined. We're really pleased with what we're seeing in terms of sharing is up and time spent is up. Video is one example of that, which I was saying that um, people are spending 80% more time watching video than they were last year, and people are producing 
four times more video than they were last year. That's just one example, but I think we, we, we feel great about the way our community is engaging. All right, let's go to another question. Yes, right there in the back, please. All the way in the back, all the way in the back. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Hobbs. I'm a partner at Crunch Fund. And um, you're talking about communities, and I've been a part of the Instagram community since it started. Um, I was actually you. here when Mikey and, uh, and Kevin started that. But my question to you is based around the communities that maybe don't lift people up, but do the opposite. So I look at it as having a teenage daughter who, when she first asked me if she could get Instagram and, and would look at stuff on my phone, and I said no. And uh, she asked for maybe two years. She actually organically made a PowerPoint presentation to get me to let her have Instagram. Wow. But uh, so what, what do you do to safeguard against those kinds of things that, that aren't so uplifting when it comes to the communities that are on Instagram? Well, I think if you have a community of 700 million people, there are gonna be moments that are not uplifting, and then there are gonna be moments that are uplifting. And what we wanna do is um, ensure that people have the tools and are able to tell their full story. Um, for teens especially, there is no such thing as your offline life and your online life. I'm sure you know this and you, and you see this. It is just your life. That is how it plays out. So if there is something that is going on in their life offline, it will most certainly play out online on the, um, on the platform. But what we're committed to doing as stewards of a community of more than 700 million, you would never build a community without, without building, uh, especially a community of that size, without building libraries, hospitals, schools. So what we want to do is create the resources, make sure that the resources are available and that people are able to get connected to the resources if they're dealing with something like a mental health issue or something like that. Um, and we also want to make sure that we are creating the tools so that people have control over the experience and that they're not having these um, negative experiences on the platform. So we're really focused and um, committed there. I will just say, there are people doing amazing things on the platform, and I am inspired by it every day. A couple months ago, it was Mental Health Awareness Month, and we created this video around this campaign called Hashtag Here For You. And we featured this young woman who, named Elise Fox. And what she talked about is how, as a teen, she battled depression, and she had nobody to talk about it with. And what she recognized is that so many teens don't have somebody to talk about with this. But she's created this group called the Sad Girls Club on Instagram. They meet and they talk online, but they also meet and talk offline. And this is happening all over the country, and she's helping to facilitate this. That's just one example. There are so many others like that to help people. Sounds fantastic. All right. We are our hashtag out of time. So if you That's could, it. please give Marnie a round of applause. Thank you for coming to ask me. Thank you.